Welcome to Nerdgasm, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the Philosopher's Stone, the connection that it has to the comic books, why it's so ridiculously overpowered, all that good stuff. In the last episode, we finally learned what the Philosopher's Stone was all about. It's calcified speed force energy, because that's not incredibly overpowered. Even so, I love it, because it really explains how all these people got their powers this season, and how Savitar was able to protect himself from the speed force bazooka. Let's talk about this whole people getting their powers from Flashpoint thing first. Probably one of the funniest themes this season was Barry having to fight people from Flashpoint, that he didn't even know had powers. It just reminds you how bad he messed up with Flashpoint. So in the comic books, especially after the comic book Flashpoint, going into the New 52 and beyond, the Speed Force gave powers to a lot of different people and it wasn't just giving them super speed. In the comic books, the Flash actually found a man inside the Speed Force named Roscoe Hines who was calling himself Turbine. Being stuck in the Speed Force had given him the power to spin at incredible speeds. Still a little related to speed, but they get better. Some other people had gotten stuck in the Speed Force as well because of Turbine. And when they escaped, they found out that they had unique powers as well. One man calling himself Turbocharger gained the ability to create and enhance technology to incredible heights. A man named Gomez started calling himself Sprint. He had gained incredible strength and he had some increased speed as well. But it wasn't anything close to the Flash's level. His girlfriend Marissa had gained the ability to vibrate her molecules through objects. But everything she vibrated through exploded on contact, kind of like Wally West. And she had also been using her powers to steal and kill. Even Iris West had gained some powers from her time in the Speed Force, but it looks like hers was related to super speed, so it's whatever. The Speed Force had also given Iris West's brother, Daniel West, Speed Force powers. Daniel started calling himself the Reverse Flash because of his powers. He was able to use the Speed Force to travel back in time, and of course, he was able to run at super speed. He actually killed all of the people that were stuck in the Speed Force so that he could absorb their powers and have enough energy to run back in time and kill his father. I'm pretty sure he was planning on killing Iris too, but he had gotten lucky with that one because of a Speed Force gun, but he definitely tried to kill the Flash. We didn't see any more people with powers show up until the real Reverse Flash, Eobard Thawne, showed up with a team he had put together to kill the Flash. He had a woman who could rejuvenate people and bring them back to their youth, so pretty much she was like a living Holy Grail. A man who could teleport anywhere he wanted to and allowed people to teleport through him. He was protecting his village and his family. A carny who could change her molecules to become invulnerable and immovable. And there was also a teenager who was given the ability to create twisters with no effort at all. A lot of his was uncontrolled and he thought he was going crazy so he had to take meds to calm himself down. Really the Speed Force is shown to be very expansive with the power set that it can give people. But there is a common theme of motion. Regardless, this really helps put the power of the Philosopher's Stone into perspective. With a solid link to the Speed Force, it makes sense how Savitar or Dr. Alchemy could give people an array of powers from a different timeline. The Speed Force is time itself, and therefore has no limit, so the stone doesn't answer to timeline fixes. If it existed once, then the stone can make it exist again. And I'm not complaining. I loved being able to see the rival get his revenge, and trust me when I tell you this, it was way better to see the rival on the Flash than in the comics, because the comic book version of the rival is just, it's, it's just lame. But that was a really long time ago. I bet you when they bring the rival back in DC Rebirth, he's gonna be awesome. If you don't know about the rival, don't spoil it for yourself. Wait for the revival of the rival. Also, it explains how it could bring back Magenta's powers. You guys remember? The girl with the purple hair. She was gonna drop a boat on that hospital. How it could bring back Shade to attack that park event that everybody was at. And how Clive Yorkin, the man who could kill anything, got his powers back. They actually did that whole vibe thing to Flashpoint to figure out who he was. That guy was legit. There were two other people who had gotten powers from the Philosopher's Stone too, but I guess we're just never going to figure out who those people were. I don't know if it was a time thing, a budget thing, or just a writer thing. But of course, the Speed Force Stone also brought us back Wally West as Kid Flash. So the stone may be crazy wacketh, but it also giveth awesome speedster sidekicks. I love the fact that we got Wally West this season. Please use him more next season. Having talked about how much power the stone has, the powers it can give people, and how it basically transcends time, it's not a stretch to say that Barry's Ghostbuster gun wouldn't work on Savitar. It was the same energy, and the only thing that could negate the Speed Force energy that the gun was putting out would be more Speed Force energy, which is exactly what the stone was putting out. I just want to know personally when the Speed Force is going to stop laughing at how bad Barry messed up, and when they're going to send the Black Flash in to just end this time remnant. Seriously, just send the cleaner in already. Let me know what you guys think about the Philosopher's Stone. Let me know if you think we're ever going to find out who those other two people who got powers were. What do you guys think of the season so far? And what do you think is going to happen in the finale on Tuesday? I am very excited. 
Let me know all your stuff in the comment section below. If you're brand new, hit the subscribe button. If you've been here for a long time, then share this with your friends who watch The Flash and want to know about the comics and the Philosopher's Stone, guys. Share the comic knowledge with people, because it gets better. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being supportive as balls and making this channel awesome. I thank you for it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.